Time's up. <laughs> Good morning. Let's switch over to this screen. There we go. How's it going? Another Sunday. Hey, Death Row. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning, best Sabin ever. Oh my. <laughs> Thank you for the 150 bits. And happy birthday, Foxy Blue. A little bit more coffee. That was surprising text to speech. <laughs> it shouldn't have been since I set it up, but that was a few days ago. All right, so. It seems like we've been working on this project for a while, but honestly, <laughs> it's not been that long. Just, you know, a couple months. Glowing Telegram. Uh, I think we... Actually, I went back to look at the VOD from, from last week to remind myself of where things were at. Um, so I'm gonna dive in. I think I need to do something. Um, I need to do something to be like, hey, questions, welcome or something. Because I feel like people come in and they'll have questions and maybe they don't feel like they don't wanna interrupt or something. So let's let's have a little diversion here at the beginning of the stream. Uh, let's see, I want to have like a text overlay, Q and A. Do something a little experimental here. Uh, let's put this on the screen so you don't see my mouse moving around. Let's do something like questions. <laughs> Not that big, but we'll, we'll, we'll adjust it. Uh, let's see, what's a good font? How are, how are we doing this fine Sunday morning? I'm looking forward to having tomorrow off. Looking forward to uh, pizza for lunch as part of uh, Foxy Blue's uh, Foxy family pizza party birthday thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably just going to be Pizza Hut, given, given limited options to have something arrive on time. Uh, let's see. Ooh, favorite code. Retina. Okay. Do something like that size, and maybe I'll do a multi line. Da, da, da. Text transform, that's fine. Vertical, no color. Let's do not quite so bright white. There we go. Uh, now that's too dark. Uh, a little opacity would be good. Uh, if I'm going to do that, then I'll make it bright white. Turn down the opacity to a little bit of a gradient with uh, maybe a little red hue. There we go. Just to make it pop a little bit. Could have done this beforehand, but <laughs> whatever. This is something that occurred to me. All right, so I'm gonna put this over, over here. Out of the way, shouldn't block anything. And maybe we'll encourage people to come by to, to ask. All right, anyway. So, uh, who, who's the audience here? <laughs> uh, briefly, just as a recap of, of where we're at so far. So the, the purpose of this application that we're working on, it's open source, uh, AGPL 3.0 uh, piece of software on GitHub called Glowing Telegram under my profile. Link is in the Discord. 
Uh, this software is about helping me um, manage streams. Right now, really focusing on video processing. So I, I have a local recording of each of my streams, and I usually go into a video editor like DaVinci Resolve, and I cut it up and splice it together and upload lightly edited uh, VODs onto YouTube and some people like that. <laughs> I think my last coding video that I uploaded um, got like 700 views, which is a lot for me. So um, I want to keep that up. And so this tool that I'm working on, which of course that coding video was about this tool is very self-referential, but anyway, is about making that easier to do and making it so that uh, like uh, using AI to auto generate video descriptions and add tags and, and, and do those sorts of things and really automate a lot of that stuff that I find uh, kind of tedious, especially when I have a bit of a backlog and I have like 20 videos that I all need to go in and add transitions and outros and little bits and uh, bobs. Uh, and uh, so that, that that's the purpose of this tool. So right now, and there are some other things I want to do in terms of enhancing like streaming itself in terms of maybe in, um, making my own chat bot and making things to like um, set up stream descriptions automatically, um, planning and scheduling and kind of um, there's there's Twitch has a lot of features, but some things are missing, <laughs> in my opinion, that uh, I would need to basically build my own like stream management thing on top of Twitch to do all the things I want. So that's a ways down the road, maybe. Um, but for now, uh, what we were working on last time around was we have the capability of looking at a a recording of a stream, so all the separate videos, and detecting where there are silences on a particular track. In this case, we're looking at, uh, I think it's set to look at the, the speech track, so the, you know, the microphone track. Um, and so we got that to work. We can actually trigger that from the UI. We can see that, but when we click load results, nothing happens. And so that's what we have, we're starting to troubleshoot a week ago. And <laughs> how do we troubleshoot this? Well, um, I think what we were looking at last time is we were looking at the debugger and we we're looking at the little bit of code that runs when we click the button, uh, which is this load data function here, right? So we have a button uh, here whose label is load results. So you can see that there. And then on click, it runs load data. So we set a breakpoint right here at the beginning of load data. When I click the button, load results, we can step through this and we can kind of peek in to the variables here. So like if I step over by clicking this button, step over, that continues to the next line. And so we can see that values Why does it say it's a function? That's interesting. All right, so we're, we're here now at set value. And source is silent segments. Values is a function. Why? I don't know if I, so, so okay. So hovering over this says one thing, but if we look down here in scopes, inside of the function body, it says value is an array of 34 items, like so. And that's what I'm expecting. Uh, so I think the hover over is just a lie, right? So if we step over this line, there you go. See, so it sees values there. I don't know why hovering over values here says uh, a function, but that's fine. Um, so this set value is coming from the form context 
from this uh, React hook, hook provided by a library that React Admin, which is the overall framework that we're using, uh, has, provides. And so there is a form context that contains everything. And we are setting value to a field in the form called silence segments. At least that's what we're supposed to be doing. That doesn't seem to be working though. Uh, because if we just like resume, we have in the source code, tab over there really quick. So in the source code, below where we're using async result loader, that's the component that has that button that we were just looking at the code for, we are mapping over silence detection segments, which is should be the, the field in the form containing the silence detection segments and we're mapping over it. Um, and I think we looked at th the React component tree and we saw that the data wasn't there anyway. So uh, it seems like there's a gap between where in async result loader, we are setting the data on the form context the version that was in the browser, uh, worth noting, where we're just calling set value directly, uh, was a, a something I wanted to test um, this morning while the stream was getting set up, where I unpacked the form context. And so I was directly calling set value instead of doing form context. It, it shouldn't matter. I didn't think it would matter, but uh, I wanted to try that. Uh, but it didn't change anything. So I changed it back. Um, that's something I've learned the hard way over, over the years, right? Of, oh, I want to try this. I don't know why it would work or why it wouldn't work or what to change. Let me try changing something. And then what you might end up doing is just stacking change on top of change on top of change that you really don't know, you know, especially earlier on in your programming, um, life. <laughs> you might not know what all those things do, but you're just trying things, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. But you probably want to control how many things you're trying at once. If you just keep on stacking up things, maybe you'll run into something that eventually works, but you'll have little idea of what specific thing or what combination of things um, was the thing <laughs> that made it work. But anyway, I was fairly confident that directly accessing set value in form context wasn't going, to, wasn't going to change anything. There was something in the docs about uh, something else from the library that this hook comes from, React hook form. Uh, but it wasn't context, it was something else. Anyway. Anyway. So it's interesting though, because this component that we've extracted out in a, in a previous stream, async result loader, it does work. Right, so we can see that in transcript where we pulled that data out, clicked load results and it loaded the data. So what I wanna do is we're gonna go to a different stream. Okay, so this one, okay, this one we did run the transcript but we hadn't loaded results yet. So that's interesting. Um, so we can try a couple of things. One thing I want to do is I want to actually try doing the silence detection first before we have the transcript. Hey, save money. Welcome in. Thanks for the lurk. I saw you followed yesterday. So thank you for the follow as well. I don't know if you're, you're much into coding, but that's what I'm doing on these Sunday morning streams. So we're gonna, um, what are we gonna do here? Right, right, right. So first thing I wanna do, I have an extension for my browser that lets, lets us look at React components. Kind of component tree, you see there's lots of stuff. It's very, it's very much uh, between 
React Admin as a framework and Material UI as our UI library adds a lot of stuff. <laughs> Just here listening. Uh, hey, I appreciate you, you being here. All right, so we can see, like here is the form tab component for the audio tab. And then we should be able to go up to like a form context that's wrapping the whole thing. It's probably easiest to like select here. And then form provider might be the thing. So there we go. We have a form state with default values, which we should have the default values if we like just loaded the view. We've not changed anything yet. The default values are what should be loaded. And so you can see transcription segments is null and silence segments is also null. So this is something where we've not loaded any of those bits of data. We've not done the uh, speech to text transcription and we've not done the silence detection. So we don't have any of the data. We do have the video clips, which is important. That's how we're identifying which videos to process. Uh, so let's try doing the silence detection here. There we go. So it's, it's going to run and we'll check status here. Task is running. Uh, this doesn't live update. So we just need to click the button every once in a while. It is going to take a couple minutes. Um, how, what could be wrong here? I mean, there's always the possibility of some typo, but I did a lot of searching in the files and it looks like it's pretty consistent about what's going on. And it's not as there's kind of limited places, right? Because in the components that's responsible for loading in the form, we don't even have it know what the uh, the name of the field where it's loading the data into. So there, there's very few places where in the front end, um, the name of the field that we're going to be populating here is present. Uh, I guess another possibility is something um, where some interaction where we've loaded the transcript segments is somehow interfering with loading the, the silence detection, uh, the silence segments. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's also possible. I'm not sure how that would happen, but that's, that's kind of the point of just trying things is that uh, <laughs> the system can be more, you know, we, we gotta we gotta know how to narrow in what to look at to try to like dig deeper into what's going on and the easiest way to do that is to try things and uh you know that that quote from sherlock holmes hey uh just jocelyn uh, jocelyn 99 hello <laughs> how do you say your name Either way, welcome in. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, let's see. Jacqueline. Uh, got it. Okay. All right. Task is still running. Like I said, this is going to be a minute. Um, like one thing we could do. <laughs> Uh, one thing we could do is uh, go over to the transcript tab and you know, we've, we've already done the transcription. We just need to load the data. I guess I did that on our previous stream and I just never clicked the, the load button maybe. Um, but if we did that, ooh, here, here's what we can do. So one of the, the, the way this UI is set up, we don't save the data. Like when we click load results here, Okay, so we can see what's about to happen. We're gonna load a lot of data. Uh, this is probably gonna crash the UI, but it's fine. Well, at least see. Aha! Is it is it frozen or is it broken? I think it's I think it's broken. So that's good news, <laughs> in a way. So that means whatever we did, whatever we did, we broke this. Um, we broke this before, 
prob maybe did it have have we actually tested this since I extracted out the component the um, the async result loader component because it seems like maybe just maybe um, doing that extraction broke things somehow somehow. <laughs> but that, that kind of narrows things down a little bit. So instead of it being like, oh, is there some typo in the silence detection field name or something special about the data or any of those other things, there's just something wrong. Hey, Alex, thank you for keeping me tabbed. Appreciate it. Um, there's something wrong with how we did the extraction of the async result loader. Um, maybe, so a lot of it's working, right? Everything up until the part where we're trying to set the form context. I wonder if we're not able, like if, if the form context is not the right thing. So let's, let's look at the docs here. Fortunately, we, we have docs that we can just hover over the function and see. So the use form context hook that we're using inside of our component here. It says this custom hook allows you to access the form context. Use form context is intended to be used in deeply nested structures, which we are, uh, where it would become inconvenient to pass context as a prop to be used with form provider, right? Yeah, so a nested input and this, this thing that we're in is kind of a nested input. Um, Okay, and and this did work before this general structure, where we have a callback function and we call form context that set value, like this has worked in the past. Um, just one level up in the component hierarchy, I guess. So I'm guessing that there's something wrong with how we're getting a hold of the form context. I could be wrong, um, but this is this is good though. Uh, has this completed? No. Okay. So let's do this. We're gonna go back to the other stream entry. Just click back here. I think it was the Pal World one from back on the twenty fourth, and we'll go to audio. It takes a second to load. Uh, check status. So task completed, of course. Uh, and if we click load results, that'll uh, exercise the function that we have the breakpoint in. So we can see here, you know, again, we have the data. The data's fine. And we have source. Now, set value here. It's coming from use form context. I think, I think the first thing I want to do is, um, let's, let's just let this run. It's not going to work. Does, doesn't work. But uh, like I mentioned, I was testing before the stream, uh, changing this to directly call set value. Uh, whereas I changed it back. Whereas, well, I changed it back anyway, um, to not destructure the return value of use form context. And that I think will be helpful if we uh, if I go into Docker and restart the front end. That'll let us see the, the version that I changed back when we uh, refresh the, the page once this finishes finishes restarting. Okay, so if we come back here and we refresh, our breakpoint will still be set in the function because we didn't change a whole lot. The lines are. Uh, I say that, but maybe they're not. Okay. Oh, no, Firefox is frozen. All right, let's give Firefox a minute to uh, recollect itself. It's kind of my fault because I have like 20 browser windows and like 100 different tabs. I could use a different browser for this, but I don't, I don't want to. Hmm. 
All right, are we unfrozen? Good, okay, so let's load results. So it's gonna work the same way here. The reason I wanted to refresh and see the, the code as it was before was because then we had a handle on form context here that we could look at. And it has all these functions, right? Watch and trigger and reset and register. Uh, can we, can we, uh, if we go to the console and just ignore all these errors, we don't have anything to do with us. <laughs> can we have access to form context? Yes. There we go. So because we have um, an active breakpoint that we're paused at in the console here, it's just as if we were, like if we <laughs> had run all the code to get to this point and we can we have access to um, this form context object and do stuff with it. Like we could call, call set value ourselves. I suspect that's not gonna do anything now. Um, so you can see we have control as an object inside of it that has things. Form values, created description ID is interesting. Ooh, one second. There we go. Um, this is interesting. Uh, hold on, let's expand form values here. Okay. Okay. So this is, this is the, uh, the form data, right? So we have the, I didn't know the description was just test, but the title is here and the transcription segments and, uh, and these details. Okay. So, um, I mean, this looks like this form context looks like it is the right form context for the whole form. So why can't we call set values? state, default values, disabled false dirty fields. There, there are no dirty fields right now. Um, okay, so let's do this. If I, if I let this run, it's supposed to do a thing, right? It's supposed to uh, freeze Firefox. <laughs> there we go. All right, it's supposed to do a thing. If I click re load results again, and we get back into the breakpoint, um, what if we were to look at form context again. Is it different? Did anything happen? Like form state? Are there dirty fields? There are. Okay, there are dirty fields, silent segments. Uh, and okay, so it looks like it did work. So why didn't it work? <laughs> uh, is valid false? It's interesting. Touched fields is empty. Dirty fields. Errors is dirty. False. I'm confused. If there are dirty fields, why is, is dirty false? Um, so like in form terminology, right? When you, like if you go to a website and you're filling out a form, you have, before you've like clicked into it, changed anything in the form, it's a pristine form, right? But as soon as you type in text, it becomes a dirty form. Now, if you backspace and erase things, maybe that is no longer a dirty form. It's pristine again, depending on the kind of the logic of how you've implemented the form. And these are um, kind of these are terms that represent how we think about the form rather than something intrinsic to like HTML forms or whatever. Um, like, because, yeah, so uh, we have default values, we have dirty fields. Can we see the, let's see, control, there we go. So inside of control, there's proxy form state is dirty all state interesting subjects. I'm just trying to understand, you know, 
what's going on here inside of this form. So we have fields. We don't have the fields that we just set though. What about in form state, form values? So there's transcription and there's silent segments. Okay. So this seems good. So why does this no longer work? Like why, why? <laughs> also interesting that, oh, okay. So there is a gap in um, kind of completely unrelated to what we're doing here, but we need to go back and make it so that the periods of time in the results from the silence detection are um, cumulative, like because we have a bunch of different videos. I think the silence detection uh, values here, which are in seconds with some stuff stuck on <laughs> on onto it, but these are like values in seconds. Um, like the first video is 20 minutes long, and then if it detects the silence at the beginning of the second video, it needs to add the time from the first video to the time to get to the the silence in the second video. Yeah, so that's the thing we'll need to do. But that, first let's fix the UI. Um, so it seems like the form has the data in it. So is it an issue of us not, what is the issue? What is the issue? Uh, so if we, so we're there. If we look at the bit of code that's responsible for rendering out the form, uh, the like the UI here. So that's that's this component, right? The uh, stream silence detection input, where we're mapping over the silence detection segments. So if we put a breakpoint here, when this UI elements is rendered out after we resume running like it should be able to see from the source field inside of the record what the segments are and then render it out and i thought we looked at this before right to be able to uh figure out why nothing was showing up all right so now we're at this other breakpoint and so there's a record but there's nothing in silence segments in record. Now let's, let's look again. Still nothing in silent segments. Sometimes it takes multiple renders for things to kind of flush out. All right. So uh, let's see if we switch tabs, that might cause a re-render. There we go. Silent segments is the source, but the record does not have silent segments. So what are we doing wrong? Let's let's look at the docs for um, set value some more on form context. Maybe maybe the arguments that we're passing here are wrong. It looks like form context itself is right. Uh, right here we go. So React hook form is the library that React admin uses. Use form context is how we get the form context. And that gives us um, methods. Okay, so is there, that should get us access to set value. This function allows you to dynamically set the value of a registered field and have the options to validate and update the form state. At the same time, it tries to avoid unnecessary re-render. So what is a registered field? And is that the problem? So prior to the set of changes to kind of make this more generic, um, our edit view, right? So the, this is the overall form view in uh, React Admin uh, or 
in, in our code using React Admin for editing a stream, right? And so this is what makes it have tabs. And so we have a transcript tab and we have an audio tab and we had stuff before. Like if we look at, um, let's see if we click this, we can actually go back in time. Let's see, how do I, how do I keep on going back? So this navigates between changes in the file, right? But if I wanna go back further in history, How do I do that? Open file at revision, previous change, next change, white space differences, unchanged regions, split editor, right? Okay. Why can't I, I'm used to having a thing where I can go back more commits in, into the past. Maybe we can just pull this up on GitHub if I can't figure this out in the next couple of seconds. File history. Uh, what does this do? Ah, right, this is from a plugin I have. What about file, open file history? There we go. All right. So. So this is what it looked like when we committed this a week ago. And then on this commit, this was the change. So we changed the kind of some of the details here. Right. But we always had a uh, an input, a stream transcript input for the transcript tab anyway. This is before we added the fourth tab. And then inside of this component, I believe we used the ray input. Now I'm wondering, looking at the docs, looking at the docs where it's talking about having a registered field, that maybe there's something that we're not doing that we're supposed to be doing. Um, something that array input was doing for us that now that our custom inputs don't use uh, a React admin input at all, maybe we're missing something that we need. So let's let's pull up the docs for React admin, uh, of which I have. That's Material UI, uh, Redis, AWS. Okay, React admin. Aspen, admin, there we go. Documentation. Okay, so there should be something in the docs on ha making a custom input. probably somewhere near here. There we go, use input. This hook lets you build custom inputs for React Admin. It's a wrapper around React hook forms use controller. Okay, I'm gonna guess that we need this for things to hook up right. Um, in fact, I bet if we wanted to dig through like the React Admin source, or React Hook Forms, that registration thing that uh, the uh, React Hook Form docs were talking about, that that's accomplished somehow somehow with this. Um, so let's do this. Let's let's make an input. Um, is there? So does use input. Okay, it returns an object with ID field, field state, form state, and is required. So what is field and field state? Validate, rest, bounded text, fee. 
field, field. I think, oh yeah, here's the thing where it was talking about React Hook Forms uh, form state. It's different than form context, but it was it's warning you that it, it's wrapped with the proxy to improve render performance, and you should prefer to destructure uh, the results of use form state to get specific fields rather than save the whole thing and passing it around. Like so. Uh, okay, so let's just try something to see <laughs> what works. Uh, so if we go back to async result loader, no, 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 no. If we go to silent, um, yeah, stream silence detection input. So I suspect that we're gonna have to make this change um, in both of our custom inputs. Um, not for stream video clips input because we're using array input there, I believe, still. Yeah, we're still using array input that's doing stuff for us. It's just because I decided that I would rather do things myself um, so that we wouldn't have to commit to a particular, like, if we used array input, then we'd have to be like, okay, well, here are the form fields and those details. And I, I just wanted to render stuff out, even though it is a, a quote unquote input. And so I'm paying for that. <laughs> uh, let's see, do we, oh, we do need to form context here. Or do we? Probably if we're using uh, use input, which we also need to import from React Admin. If we're using that, then um, we probably can change how we're interacting with form context here. But I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. Let's. Um, Add this ID just to see if we can get something to work, and then we'll worry about the the finer details. Let me start the front end. All right. Well. Time flies. <laughs> uh, where there's the hey Pizza Portal, welcome in. First time chatter. <laughs> Hydrate. Uh, let's see if I can make that happen. Nope, I'm I'm out of water. Uh, I have a little bit of coffee. That counts, right? No. I owe you one hydrate. Save money. <laughs> no worries. That's what Twitch said. That counts. Okay. Well, I'm out of coffee. Uh, we're going to be taking a break here in a minute. Uh, well, a few minutes. <laughs> I'll fill up my water then. Uh, let's see. So back to the front end, uh, I'm going to remove, I think I'm going to, I'm going to be hopeful that this is going to work. I'm just going to remove the breakpoint. All right. Well, there's the transcript. I know. Obviously that was, that was working before if we are, had already loaded the data and now Firefox is going to need a minute to think. Think, think, think. Oh, good. The little spinny wheel shows up on uh, on the stream too. Good. <laughs> All right. So if we check status, of course we can see the the task is still completed. It has been completed. We load results. Um, oh yeah, we have the other breakpoint. Let's just run it. Aww. Did I did I refresh though? I don't know if I refreshed. No, I must have. Okay, well anyway, check status.
So besides me having like 20 browser windows and 100 different tabs open, some of this may also be down to the fact that the, the transcript tab has a bunch of elements, like hundreds of elements, a thousand elements, some number, a lot of a lot of things going on. Uh, might be slowing things down a little bit, although I don't know why Firefox should freeze up just because a tab is slow. But... All right, so load results. Nada. That is unfortunate. Do we see our our change here? In uh, oh, this is this is the wrong file. There we go. In this file, we are using input, um, and we are passing source. Like if we breakpoint here, click load results, it causes a re-render. Source of course contains. That's a lie. <laughs> source contains uh, silent segments. There we go. Hmm, yeah, it still is not working. <sighs> All right, more dock sweeping, I think. Did you remove coconut.jpg? Because you know, if you delete that, everything breaks, right? <laughs> There was never a coconut that JPEG. I'll have you know. Brainless, good morning. Welcome in. Another cute emote. Quite sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm I'm also quite sure that. Uh, I did break it by moving things around because this was working uh, and I don't have like a oh I upgraded react admin or something <laughs> as an excuse uh, so I'm pretty sure that the issue let's do this you know what we can do here something that we know that works or worked before what if we just switch this to using an array input. Right, so that array input is gonna handle calling the, like doing the React admin um, input setup stuff. Now, stuff's not gonna work, but that's fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to comment out this. So, yeah, there we go, there's the right one. Uh, get rid of that thing that I just added. We're gonna comment out this block of code. There we go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a array input. Uh, I was napping so sleepy but need to wake up, yes. You don your red cloak and light the incenses and use blessed oil. Uh, nah. Nah, nah, nah. Array input. Alright. And then, so I have, for those that are maybe <laughs> watching but have not watched before, I, um, I have, I'm paying for GitHub Copilot. Uh, so I have AI to write code for me that is uh, sometimes actually even right. Is this the case though? Um, so this has it passing in the stream silence detection segment input. That's probably not actually going to work. Of course, none of this is gonna work until I you know, import all the things, but the stream silence detection segment input is a custom thing that I made that also is not a proper React admin uh, input field. So instead of using this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use, there we go, just the text field, add all missing imports, and save. So this should satisfy it. 
course, now all this stuff is uh, giving us errors because we're not actually using any of it right now. Uh, same thing for record, apparently. There we go. All that goes away. And then we're not using this either. I'm just commenting, commenting it out because it is it is going to make a return. Someday. Wake up, brainless society. Did this help? <laughs> Foxy, thank you for another 150 bits. Uh, Brainless says, AI sucks most of the time uh, writing code. I was playing around with open source models the other day, and then they gave pretty good answers from some for some Python code, uh, but we're good unless you knew the internals of the language. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's very... I find it helpful for, let's see, a couple of cases. One, just... Like, finishing the rest of the owl is not the right word, but like if I have a sketch of like, here is the structure. <laughs> Continue doing the thing that I'm already doing. Uh, it can do that, not too badly. Apparently the word brainless is not allowed. <laughs> uh, interesting. Interesting. Um, and then the other thing is like, I have no idea <laughs> what should go here. Uh, AI, give me an example of something. It's going to be wrong, but it'll be interesting and kind of like, uh, poke my brain in a way that will be maybe helpful for me thinking of something that's actually useful. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's no different than having like a junior software engineer writing code for you. It's also, well, sometimes it will not look good either, but th there's a point where uh, people are dangerous, <laughs> where they can write good enough looking code, but there are subtle bugs in it, and AI is no different. That's why we write unit tests. And all the other tests going up the pyramid, too. Um, yeah, that's my concern. A lot of new developers are using AI as if that was the best way to write code. Yeah, I mean, because you got to think that a lot of the, the models that the, those things are trained off of are, in fact... I guess there's also a lot of junior devs writing code, <laughs> especially like in open source repos and places that those models might be trained from. And so you are not getting an AI trained off of the best code. Like you're getting, you know, average or worse code <laughs> in the model. And then people are like stamping out things. Yeah. Um, it, It is not something that you should just, it is, I think it is an issue, especially for more, for people that are newer uh, to be, they're not gonna have the skills, the experience to, uh, to be able to vet out the nonsense the AI is gonna try to give them. All right, so this gives us a new UI, right? Because we're using the array input. And maybe once Firefox stops hanging, uh, this will actually work. All right, and then, but right aside, I still plan to use it in the future, mostly as an autocomplete source, yeah. Yep. I have had some fun with like higher level, kind of like brainstorming of ideas in uh, with ChatGPT. Uh, and I'll occasionally I'll have it generate some code to kind of sketch out things uh, as part of that. I have not used any open source models. I think at some point, I think there's a browser <laughs> with some tabs about those things that uh, I was going to check out. Ooh. All right, we have, we have rows. I think my, my code is wrong. It's probably not starting to end. Yeah, yeah, uh, Olama. Yep, sounds familiar. 
All right, so we did get, let's filter just for S SHR. So the response data does have start and end. Slate talk for AI models. Yeah. So we do have start and end. So why don't we have data here? Why no work? I mean, it's progress, right? We're actually seeing, hey, there are rows <laughs> for our, our results. Uh, source start, source end, simple form iterator, array input. Did we do anything to in a, like array and async result loader to change the structure of the data? No, right? Like why, why are there no values here? All right, so if we go over to components, Simple form iterator, array input, context memos. Somewhere we should be able to see the data. There we go. Start ends and ID. I don't know where the ID is coming from. I think maybe um, array input is doing that. So, all right, we're gonna take a little break here though. I'm gonna go get some water. And uh, I'll be back in a few minutes and we'll troubleshoot this some more. BRB.